so let me talk a little bit about the future of business intelligence, which is really what this is, right? It's all about finding information about other companies and investors and competitors and people and all this stuff. Um, it's a graph, right? You know, it's all about these things being connected. Um, Facebook, if you think of Facebook, it's a graph, everybody knows, social graph, blah, blah, blah. But it's people connected to people and to events in their lives. The events in their lives tend to be status messages. And when we started thinking about Crunchbase, what we said is, why can't we be the graph for business? Why can't we connect people and companies and products and patents and awards and you know, um, you know, programs like this and you know, where people went to college and you know, when, you know, when they launched a new product or when they made an announcement or when they rebranded? Why isn't all that in a graph? Why can't I just go ask, give me all the companies that have rebranded in the mobile analytics space in the last two years and just pull all the events for, for brand changes connect that to companies, connect that to companies tagged mobile analytics, look at the dates and get, get myself an answer. Like, why can't you do that? And you can't do it today, it's hard. But all this data is public. You know, if you go read a TechCrunch article, and I read a lot of them, um, every time there's an announcement now, it's like the currency of an announcement to get, get into TechCrunch is how much information are you willing to divulge? Are you gonna say how many employees you have? You know, how many customers? How much money are you making? You know, when are you going to launch your next product? All that stuff, like, it's all out there. It's amazing how much information is out there. Yet if you want to go find it, it's super hard. My favorite example is TechCrunch has these big awards. I work in the same office as the TechCrunch people. These Disrupt Awards or Battlefield Awards, whatever they call it. Try and go on the internet and find out who's won the Battlefield Awards for the last five years or however long it's going. There is no page for that. And TechCrunch is a big business. I mean, those conferences, you know, those are huge businesses. Um, there's no page. And, and the events team is there. Like the, the team that's running the awards is sitting in the office. And I say, so why aren't there pages? And they just kind of look at me, they're like, if there was a place for us to go type it in, certainly we would type it in. But like, we have to plan the next conference. And you know, we talk to venture firms too. And some of the venture firms come to us now and they say, will you just run our portfolio pages for us? It's too hard for us to keep track of what's happening. We, we can't track when companies rebrand or when they hire a new, a new executive company or when they launch a product. We just can't do it. Like, if it was just out there and we could just point to you guys, that would be great. So all this information is out there, but it's just really hard to like, pull together. So at the beginning of the year, and the reason why we've gone from three very part-time people to 17 now, and we'll probably be somewhere in the 30s next year, is because we're building this graph. And it kind of looks like this, which is interesting because I pulled this off of a website which already, mapped, already showed all the crunch-based data in a graph. It's not just a cool graphic, it actually is crunch-based data that somebody took the API and pulled together and did. But we're building a system that handles all of that. And you can put in any of that information and ultimately then you can go query for it. So that's what we're working on today. Um, and so what you end up with is this definitive business graph. People can do whatever they want with it. It kind of looks like this. It actually looks like a website that was built in, you know, post, you know, 2010 rather than something that was mid-2000s or earlier. Um, it's all coming together. Uh, it's responsive. It does all kinds of fancy stuff. We're going to internationalize it because there is a huge demand right now um, to have one global database of startups and founders and investors. Um, you talk to the large venture firms, um, and what they'll tell you is, you know, we have offices in Bangalore and in Beijing and in Moscow and Hong Kong and Berlin or wherever else. We have the same essential invest, essentially the same investment thesis across all these places. Why don't we have a database that pulls all these companies together? We don't want to look at, in lots of places. Crunchbase, please go build the global database. So we're doing that. Um, so, oh. Open data's impact on what's going on in investing. And it touches on Gust, and it touches on AngelList, and, and all these people. So hopefully this will answer those questions. Um, there's a lot of people out there right now who are quantifying startups, and quantifying the developers, and quantifying the founders, and quantifying the investors. And they're doing all kinds of stuff with all this open data, or pu public data, whatever you want to call it. So just some examples. Um, People who are integrating analytics into the, their investment thesis, uh, Sequoia, Greylock, Kleiner, they're just some of the bigger ones and they've been very 
outspoken about the fact that they have data science teams. So you used to think about it like a data scientist is probably somebody sitting at Amazon, you know, trying to figure out like where exactly to put the buy button on the page to get people to spend more money, or you know, if you just bought, you know, product X, what product should we recommend to you that you're most likely to buy after buying product X? Like people thought of like that's where the data scientists were. But you know, these venture firms, and there's a lot of them are hiring their own data scientists. And they're pouring through data, and they're going through all kinds of stuff about people's backgrounds and you know, numbers about you know, how many downloads web apps have and how much money individuals have raised before and where they went to school. And what they're doing is they're trying to find signals that would indicate whether a person or a team or an idea is going to be successful or not. And they're, they're out there, and they're working hard, and they're spending a lot of resources on it. Not everybody, ha not all of the venture firms have um, you know, a large enough fund to support a big data analytics team. So there's other companies which are coming out which build analytics which they sell to the investors. So Mattermark, Seedling, Dashboard, all of them are about scoring all the same stuff that the data science teams that these big firms are doing. But these people are doing it. And what they're doing is, is they're, they're creating a platform and then they're selling access to that platform. And then the other thing that's been really interesting that's happening is that new venture firms are starting based around analytics. So here's two examples. Founders Institute, I don't know how many of you have heard of it. They run all kinds of events for founders finding other founders and people, you know, uh, pitch contests and all that stuff. Um, they run thousands of these events all over the world. But in doing that, they've collected all this data on all these founders. So they're raising a fund right now, and they're going to use a lot of that data that they've collected in addition to all their relationships that they've built, and they're going to use that in order to, um, in order to start a fund. And I think they're, they're going to announce their fund sometime this year. Signal Fire. This is another interesting one. It's a bunch of extremely hardcore data scientists who are building a fund where the centerpiece of the fund is a data engine to help people make better investment decisions. So not only are you seeing venture firms starting to use data a lot more, and in every venture firm, whether they're the really big ones or not, but you're seeing new, new investment vehicles being created around this data that's out there and that's open.